So you wanna go hard? So you wanna be the greatest? Your life is a fantasy, and it's all for the taking. Cause this time is down, and I gotta get it. I'm a beast, I'm a freak when it comes to winning. Eyes on the prize, like it's all for you. Welcome to the show, everybody. Joseph Robert, the Fantasy Football Counselor. We're talking top 10 quarterbacks today in the studio with Tim, a.k.a. the Bald Man. What's going on, Tim? Oh, I'm just getting in a good stretch. Why did you start recording there? You look relaxed today, man. You look <laughs> ready to go. And we are what? We're at August 12th, man. That means we are not too far away from the season. Are yeah, you, baby. The excitement's building. I read a post saying, like, we are one month away from like, now this was a couple days ago, yeah. mind you. So we're, we're actually even closer now so we can be excited. We are like one month away. I believe it's Thursday night football. It's going to be the Chiefs versus the Texans. You know, we're going to have David Johnson versus Pat Mahomes, two of the best players in the NFL, all in one spot. Really? You're going to have a running Johnson. back against a quarterback? <laughs> People are going to disagree. Like, David Johnson, that guy's that guy's washed up. What are you talking about? No, listen, I'm, I'm really, really excited about David Johnson this season. And it's ironic because everybody that's been talking bad about him is going to see him during prime time tear it up. And, and I'm beyond excited. I hope so. I mean, I'm yeah. pretty high on him this year too, man. I, th- I think everything is there for him this year. Yeah. Today we're going to be talking about the top 10 quarterbacks. If you haven't gone back and checked out our top 10 running backs, if you haven't gone back and checked out our top 10 wide receivers, go back and do that. Go back a couple episodes. Check that out. Make sure you guys are following on Insta at Fantasy Football Counselor. I've been tearing it up on there in story mode. I've been having a lot of fun you here. You always go crazy on your socials. <laughs> if you have not seen yet, uh, a couple days ago I called Le'Veon Bell up for a boxing match for charity he declined it saying i was out of shape so then i'm just gotta gotta get in shape and he said you're old basically he said you gotta grow up yeah i said i'm old which he's kind of right on (laughs) all right i'm older than him that's for sure all right also before we get into this show the top 10 quarterbacks tim i gotta let everybody know that now is the time we're we're almost there man we have four more sundays what are you waiting for i don't understand it some people are actually waiting I mean, a lot of people have got 16 rounds, but the people that have it are probably just waiting. Their draft is getting closer. People are pushing their drafts back now because of what's happened with yeah, the world circumstances. But I got to tell you, the season's going to happen. Everything is going. Everything is going, except for like college football. But everything else is going. I mean, basketball, hockey, everything. You baseball, know, yeah. baseball, soccer, it's everything is going. So football is the premier sport. It's a top sport. It's going to go. They've taken all the precautions. It's going to go. Uh, prepare for your drafts, guys, and get the 16-round drafts. Which I just did an August mock draft update. Every single round in there, walking you through all the rounds, making sure your roster is optimal. I mean, Tim, I've put a lot of heart and soul and time into this, making sure people win. Everything that I've got, I've put into this, and I wouldn't put out a product I don't genuinely believe in or that I personally wouldn't use. So head on over to thefantasyfootballaccounts.com, get the 16-round draft solution. I've also linked it below. Beyond excited to put this out there, Tim. Yeah, man, it is it is a game changer. It's a totally different way of approach. It. It's not like the old cheat sheet draft kit sort of deal. This is your thoughts. This is your suggestions on who to take, when to take them. I love it, man. I mean, I'm a guy who kind of pushed you to put this list together and do this yep. in the first place. So I'm happy every year. I think it's great. All right, man. So get it. The fantasy football council.com or link below 16 round draft solution. Not a kit. Or like first aid kit is a kit. This is a solution. <laughs> so get it, guys. All right. Let's start off with uh, we're going to work our way down. Okay, we're going to go from 10 all the way to 1, and I'm going to give you guys my quarterback that I like, then Tim, are we going to do the snake thing? We'll figure it out in regards to what order we're going to go into. So I'll start off with my number 10 here, and again, we're going to work down to the number one quarterback of Fantasy Football 2020. This goes off the ADP consensus list. I don't like ADP consensus list, so we're going to deep dive in here and tell you which quarterbacks that we like kind of in the order we draft them, okay? So I'm beyond excited to share this list with you, and I want to do a little note here for everybody and a little bit of a disclaimer. I want you guys to all be fully aware of this. There is a ton of depth at quarterback. Tim, I'm seeing guys like Phillip Rivers available going undrafted. I'm seeing Drew Locke, a guy that has a huge ceiling that you can get as a backup. Now they're going to say, well, Joey, if Drew Locke busts, they're going to say, Joey told me to draft Drew Locke round one. Never said that. I was saying that he's a backup quarterback with massive upside, okay? Phillip Rivers, Drew Locke, Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, Big Ben, all these guys yeah. going super late, undrafted. There's a ton of value super late. Even Gardner Minshew, uh, who I think could be a, a big sleeper here, could finish top 10. I don't have him in my top 10, but I mean, the ceiling is there. He only played 14 games, still finished 19th amongst quarterbacks. He's going to find his groove. And the only difference between him and Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray ADP 
round five. Minshew basically going undrafted for the most part. The only difference between those two guys in regards to fantasy points. Now, Minshew had 229 points compared to... What did Kyler have? 285. But the only difference, Tim, was the rushing attempts and the rushing touchdowns with Kyler. That's the only thing separating these two guys from, you know, finishing par last year almost. Okay, but that's pretty huge. <laughs> it is huge. It is huge. But I'm trying to make a point here that, that one is going really high, fourth, fifth, sixth round. Rounds four to six is early. People thinking he's going to be the next Lamar Jackson. And, you know, you got Minshew who's going undrafted with a difference of 40 points. Yeah. Run, you know? Running quarterbacks, though, man. Right. I mean, damn, you saw it with Lamar. Okay, anyway, the point I'm trying to make is there's a ton of value at quarterback, weight on quarterback. I want to start off with that. All right, so let's go here. Number 10. Let, wait, let me throw yeah. a disclaimer in because you made your list sound as if this is the way you're going to draft them or the order you're going to draft them right. in. If that's correct, yep. that's not what I'm doing. I'm saying this is the way I could see these guys finishing the year. So I'm not necessarily drafting them in this order. This is how I think they're going to finish 2020. Well, actually, I could see them finishing like this as well. So either way, <laughs> I, I, I like these guys. So just go with the fact that they could finish like this. Let's go with that. Okay? Right on. E either way, I think you're good. First guy, Ryan Tannehill. And, and again, that reinforces what I'm about to say. This guy could easily finish in the top 10. Nobody's got him in the top 10. Now, he finished 22nd last year amongst quarterbacks, but did not play the first six games, okay? That is huge. What I like about him, obviously, is the fact that he's got a really good O-line. He's got Derrick Henry that could block for him. He was 22-6 and six in regard to touchdowns versus interceptions. That's definitely going to go up this year. I think A.J. Brown is going to finally get into his groove this year. Now he's got an ace wide receiver to throw to, and we've seen him make Landry a viable fantasy option years ago back when they played together in Miami. So Tannehill, finally, I think he's found his groove. And again, I keep going back to this example is that the fact that he could have easily finished top three amongst quarterbacks. Now, the number two quarterback last year behind Lamar Jackson was Dak Prescott with 337 points. The guy behind him was Russell Wilson with 328. Ryan Tannehill finished with 224 points. He was averaging around 20 points per game. You project out the six games he missed. Now you've got a quarterback with around 320 to 340 points and would have made him finish top three. Did that happen? No. But what I'm saying is he could easily finish top 10 is what I'm saying. So he was, like I said, he almost finished top five. So top 10 doesn't seem out of the question for a guy that's going to be pretty efficient in a good system with a, with a good team around him. Yeah, my only concern with him is that they are essentially a running team. I mean, Derek yeah. Henry does so much of the work that, uh, you know, he could very easily lose a couple of throwing touchdowns to be rushing touchdowns. So, yeah. you know. Other than that, 10th spot, yeah, good place, man, and good call. Okay, who's your number 10? My number 10 is Drew Brees. Yeah, I know, he's old as dirt, and he's getting up there, and he's been off the last few years. His numbers as of, have actually steadily declined. Right. He's got a great team. He's always got a great team. I mean, he's got Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara, Jared Cook. He's got guys that can catch the ball, so there's going to be a lot of numbers there. I think this is a good year for him. I think he's going to finish over that 300-point mark again. Hasn't done it for like the last four, but right. I think this is his year. I think he's going to have the, and you know, before he was always throwing for over 600 every year. Right. Last three years, it's been like five something down to 490 last year injured, but still the numbers have been off. Yes. He's been on a decline. He's still an amazing talent. I think Drew Brees 10. Yeah, I mean, I see him finishing at 10, but I would not draft him based on this reason, number one. No, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, he is quarterback by committee, which which I hate. I know they say, well, Taysom Hill doesn't come in too much. He does come in, especially near the goal line there. He's going to take some of those rushing touchdowns. Not that Breeze is a rushing touchdown kind of guy. I just don't like Hill being there. I don't like Breeze coming out for any play or any or my quarterback's coming out for any plays. So that's a big turnoff to me. Another turnoff is his volatility. So some games he has the 40-point game. The next thing you know, he has a, a crappy five, seven-point game. And I see the volatility all the time. And then coming off the injury last year, I got my question marks surrounding him. To me, that's why he's out of the top 10. Not a guy I want to draft because I don't trust him week in, week out. Now, if he's got a good matchup in daily fantasy, I, I definitely would consider yeah. starting him there if he's a bargain that week. Other than that, man, to me, I, I can see him finishing top 10, but I personally won't be drafting him. Yeah, right on. You know, it's a tough one. And I, you're right, DFS, yeah, definitely. I mean, if Drew Brees is ever a value, you got to take him. All right, so I'll move with mine instead of Snakey just so it keeps it in order. Uh, Tom Brady's who I got here at number nine. He finished 12th last year. And again, not the best year, but threw over 4,000 yards. What I don't like here, again, is the age. Obviously, with age, maybe there's a possible decline. But I still think he's still got the juice left in him to have a good year. And he's on a high-octane team here, potentially with, with the receivers. He's got his old uh, Gronkowski there. He's got other talent around him. I think he's going to be solid this year. He's got Godwin. He's got Evans. I like Brady a lot this year. And again, top 10, 
Easel easily for him this year. It finished 12th last year amongst quarterbacks. Better team this year, in my opinion. I think he's going to be great this year. What are your thoughts on Brady? I've actually got him a little bit higher. I got him a couple places higher. And let's put it this way. Tom Brady is a vampire. Yeah. He's a vampire. He does not age. So, yeah, even though he's getting up there in number, man, this guy just never seems to show it. You know, he's, he's still an amazing, amazing talent. Like I say, I've got him higher. I've got him at seven. Okay, so who do you got there at your nine? I have Mr. Matt Stafford. This is kind of a hope and a prayer. You know, I mean, I'm going, he was on pace to have a great 2019 after having an abysmal 18. It was yeah. brutal. Um, so I hesitate because he is an up and down, and I hope we get the Matt from last year. I just don't know. I think he could crack the 300 range, so I'm giving him the number nine spot, which is pretty high, but like I say, it's kind of a hope and a prayer, but I think it's definitely doable. I like him, and that's what we are talking about prior to the show. I talked about all these sleepers, the guys who get late. This guy's a huge bargain this year that you can get, and I love the combo with Kenny Galladay. I think they're going to have a phenomenal year together. I like Matt Stafford a lot. Predicated, he stays healthy, and again, he's kind of those veteran, what you see is what you get. He's going to be solid, safe, secure. He's going to throw the ball a lot. You're going to get that volume out of him. I would consider him as a backup quarterback for my team because I like to get my ace. I like to get a guy that's got more of a ceiling like the guys that we're talking about here uh, as we move up higher. But, I mean, Stafford's going to be safe, solid, secure. Again, I like the receiving options there. they got a running back this year with Swift. Hopefully he comes in as a rookie, tears it up, should pass carry on Johnson on the on the depth chart with ease. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's not a bad option coming in 10. I definitely see that viable, him finishing in the 10 for sure. Number nine, right on. Yep. All right, so number eight for me. Now, this guy is a lot higher for a lot of people, and I don't do copy and paste. In this case, it actually just worked out like that because he finished eighth last year amongst quarterbacks. The guy I'm talking about is Kyler Murray. He had a good year last year, decent year, where he kind of lacked in the touchdowns. He only threw 20 touchdowns for, what, 12 interceptions. It wasn't the best ratio. wasn't a lot of touchdowns. Where he made up with that was the rushing attempts. Third in rushing attempts was 93. So he started running a lot. He's got those four, what is it, four rushing touchdowns, which isn't bad. So he can get the, the stuff done on his feet as well, which is kind of nice. People like the upside. People like the fact that they've got Hopkins there. They've got all these receiving options. I definitely see the upside. I definitely see the talent. He started getting better near the end of the season. We saw him <clears throat> scrambling and getting into trouble and basically losing yardage. As the season progressed, as a guy watching this offense heavily last year because I was following the unfolding drama of David Johnson and Kenyon Drake, uh, I saw that Kyler Murray's pocket presence was better when he was getting in trouble instead of losing yardage but and getting tackled. He was throwing the ball away uh, in a very smart manner. I mean, the ceiling is there. Is he going to be the next Lamar Jackson? That's the big question. I'm going to say no. What are your thoughts no, on? No, I, I have once it. again, I have him and I have him higher than you, but no way does he match a Lamar Jackson. I don't see it. People are just saying, oh, he's the next Lamar. I want to get him in the fifth round. That's value. Now, <clears throat> this is a guy that I was getting in the 10th round. He was my backup in all my leagues last year, pretty much, because I love the ceiling. I love the talent. And again, his ADP shoots up. And there's another guy here on the list that, again, was a value last year and has been throughout the years. And now his ADP is higher. So, for that reason alone, the fact that I can't get him in the 10th round pisses me off. And that's what the 16-round draft solution is about, Tim. I got to tell you, we spot out the talent before it breaks out. So while people are riding the trend from last year thinking mm -hmm. it's hot, we're already on to the next rising trend, if that makes sense. So let me explain this to you. I'll give you a perfect example. I saw an article last night uh, that came out. I won't say which site publicated, but it's one of these top sites. They said, these are the guys you got to be careful. And they said, warning, red flag. They said, oh, these are three guys that I saw on the list. Odell, Gurley, and Johnson. So what they're doing right now is this, they're looking at guys that had off years last year. Because mm -hmm. I was telling you, stay away from Odell three years in a row. They looked at guys that had off years last year and said, stay away from these guys, possibly because they're red flags. But I'm saying... They're on the upward trend now. You know what I'm saying? Get them for value. Yeah, I mean, I look I, at it differently. I can see it going both ways, though. Gurley and Johnson, especially with injuries. Yeah, yeah we'll see. I think they're going to boom this year. So I'm. You got to find the trend. You got to ride the weight when when it's hot. When it's upwards trend, like kind of buying a stock cheaper before it, if it goes up. Don't buy it when it's expensive. Right. And Kyler is really expensive this year for me. I don't like it. But again, I got to put him in the top ten because I see that's where he's going to finish. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, like I said, I got him a little higher even. So my number eight is Mr. Josh Allen. Didn't really want to put him in here just because the team really has nothing. Right. He does it all himself, but that's the thing. So this is a guy who doesn't necessarily look to run first, but can run really well, I think. So, you know, the addition of Diggs, his ability to run and score his own touchdowns. I think you take all that into account. Josh Allen at number eight. Good spot for him, I think. Now, 
I've got him a little higher here. Um, so we're going to touch on him when we get when I get to him. Let's put it that way. So let's move on to my number seven. I want to talk a little bit more about Josh Allen. I like him this year. But, yeah, we'll talk a little bit more when I get to him. Uh, number seven here, I got Dak Prescott. Another guy similar to the Kyler situation. These guys are coming off in round five. Uh, this was a guy that everybody was sleeping on for years. I just kept getting him as a backup in a lot of my leagues throughout those years as a steal. Had a good year last year, finished second. That's why his ADP is inflated, right? He's fifth round guy coming off as early as the fourth round, and he's going to come off even higher in two quarterback leagues. You know, if you're in a two quarterback or a super flex league, these quarterbacks come off a lot higher. So you want, want to secure them as well. So when I look at a guy like Dak Prescott, I still think he continues to have a good year this year. They've added CD Lamb, so they've given him another versatile weapon at the wide receiver position, which is phenomenal. He's got something to prove. You know, he wants that big, 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 big mega contract, which still has yet to happen. He's getting paid a decent amount, but he wants more. He wants to prove a legacy, hopefully. I mean, they've got all the weapons there to give him, to help him with that. This is a prove-it year for Dak Prescott. I think he has a massive year. Top five finisher for sure. I got him outside the top five because I think there's higher ceilings on the guys I'm going to mention here below. Below, But yeah, Dak is safe and secure. Will you invest a fifth-round pick? I personally probably won't. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he's definitely going to be a top 10. Yeah, I've got him at number four. Yeah, for sure. So you got him higher. <laughs> so, All right. so just to build on what you said, though, last year was by far his best year statistically. So keep that in mind. He's only been in the league, what, four years, five yeah, years now? Like that, yeah. Every year he's gotten a little better, a little better, a little better. I think this is kind of his plateau. I think this is where his numbers will be. I look for maybe a slight drop or stay the same. It's, it's kind of going to be right there. Very comfortable putting him at five. Like you say, he's got a good team around him. Everything's working out for him right now. Yeah, well, that's something you got to look at. Like you said, he's been four years in the league. This was his pinnacle year in regards to fantasy production. Prior to that, he always falls in around 270 points if you average it where he finishes in regards to points. 337 was a peak year for him. But again, he's got the addition of the weapons. Could be good. So I see him in around 300 points. Yep, right on. Okay, so your number seven? My seven is another old goat, Tom Brady. Oh, you got him higher than me. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> All right, so that's good. Yeah, yeah we're mean, talking about him, man. He's he's an extremely capable leader. He just he always <laughs> finds a way to get it done. This is going to be a three hundred point season. You know, yeah. He, he typically averages in that high two hundreds, two eighty ish. This is going to be a three hundred. Yeah, I think it works in his favor. Similar to Kyler Murray, they've got a lot of weapons around them. Do I trust the weapons around them? No, simply because there is a lot of mouths to feed. But for the quarterback, it's mm-hmm. great because they've got team, the weapons. Yeah, as a team, it's awesome. Exactly. So my number six here, I got to go with this guy, and I'm putting my money on him. He had a down year last year, which finished nine. I'm talking about Aaron Rodgers, by the way. Finished ninth amongst quarterbacks on a down year, only 26 touchdowns, but still pretty efficient, only throwing four interceptions. Still managed to go 4,000 yards. Now, if you go back to, I think it was his 2015 or 2016 year, man, this is a guy that throws a lot of touchdowns, 40 touchdowns back in 2016. And you're saying, well, Joe, you're living in the past. (laughs) You keep talking about David Johnson's 2016 year. You keep talking about Aaron Rodgers' 2016 year. Yes, because they have that ceiling left. I still think there's juice. And I think that the guys that I pick usually are guys with chips on their shoulders. So they're not just guys that are just leaning back. They got something to prove, man. Aaron Rodgers has got a lot of heat on him. They just drafted Love right now at quarterback. They already know that Rodgers is the guy. They've stated that he's still the guy, but I still think there's going to be some pressure there at the quarterback position for him to succeed. Hopefully Adams is healthy this year. Adams was out last year. Again, still finished top 10. So ninth, exactly. 4,002 yards, 26 touchdowns, four interceptions. His touchdowns definitely go up this year. His yardage goes up this year. Hey, maybe a few rushing touchdowns for Aaron Rodgers yet again. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I got a note here. I wanted to say Aaron Rodgers. He did not make my top 10. What? Just outside. I wanted you, to say him, but nope, couldn't do it. People are ripping you on our wide receiver episode. I know. For, for, I don't, Suck it. I don't care. Show me your list and let's compare at the end okay. of the season. Okay, so he finished ninth last year. Aaron Rodgers, ninth last year amongst quarterbacks. In 2018, Tim... He finished sixth amongst uh, amongst so quarterbacks. So that's a decline. No, no, no. They, they, <laughs> he, he fell down. Through. So always oh, you're saying he's on a down. He's on a steady decline. He's he's losing it. Okay, 2017. I think he was banged up, and then in 2016, he had you know one of the best seasons in his life yeah. for for fantasy, 380 points. So 
I mean, yeah, so he has been showing some decline, but I still think top 10 is would definitely with You know, him. I've said it many times. Last year, to me, he just didn't look like Aaron Rodgers. He didn't look like the guy I'm exactly. used to seeing. So exactly. I, I don't know if he's back this year. If so, great. Like I say, he just barely didn't make my 10. So okay. uh, it's not like I'm dumping on him. <laughs> All right, you're number six. Did you do your six? Yeah, that was yeah, Aaron Rodgers. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, mine is Matt Ryan, who I took a sneak peek at your list, and I know you got him a little higher. Throwing quarterback, yeah, arguably three of the most amazing pass catchers going. Julio Ridley Hurst, you know, throw Gurley in the mix now. Yeah. Oh my God. And I then, mean, and I know you've got him higher. So six, yeah, you might be more correct on this one. Yeah, I'm excited. We're gonna talk to him when we get to him in a second. Um, I got him a little higher than you. So yeah, so he's your six. So number five, and we talked about him for you. He was higher. Uh, Josh Allen, he's number five for me. And again, I was talking to Jimmy Maverick. He comes on the show. Um, you know, good guy, very good. He's got an app that helps you draft. Uh, we were talking about this. And he thinks Josh Allen's going to be on a decline. He ran a lot. Maybe the rushing attempts go down a little bit this year. But again, number two in rushing attempts behind Lamar. So he's a running quarterback. But what we were talking about, what Jimmy made a good point was, and it kind of concerns me, is he had nine rushing touchdowns. Mm-hmm. That that is that's crazy. I mean, I don't I don't see that being duplicated, and I and I get that. But where I think he'll make it up is, I think, in the passing. He was 21 Mm -hmm. in attempts for passing, which is not good at all. Just threw over, what, 3,000 yards. That's not good, right? We want more. 3,089 yards. They have the addition of digs now. They've got a true wide receiver one, in my opinion. He's got to throw more. That's just the bottom line. So he's going to get some done on his feet. He's got to throw more. He reminds me kind of 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 Andrew Luck, a little bit. I don't know what it is. Andrew Luck was obviously better, um, but, I mean, he's got a great, he's got a cannon for an arm, arguably one of the best arms in the NFL, and he's going to rush the ball, and he's got some. He's got to throw more, and I think they're going to do that this year. I mean, five might be a little bit high, and I admit that, but I like him. He's coming off a little bit after Kyler and Dak. You can get him on average round six. He's coming off seven, typically in a 12-person league. I like him. I like the ceiling. I like the upside, and I feel secure starting him as a starter, but I want to get a good backup. Now, this was the guy I said would finish ahead of Baker Mayfield last year. People thought I was nuts because everybody was riding the Baker Mayfield hot train. Now they're off the train. They like Allen a bit more, and now everybody's riding Allen. So if I can get him as a value in the seventh round, I might do it. Probably not the sixth. Yeah, no, I like it, and I like that. Uh, I like your thought process there. Yes, he may lose some in his rushing numbers, but I yeah. think he will make up for it in his passing. So I think so, too. Lose a little here, gain a little here. Balances out. Yeah. Put some top five to top ten. So, all right, so let's hear your five. My five is Kyler Murray, another rushing yep. quarterback. So, yeah, we've already talked about him. I just, I think he's going to have, he's going to make some great gains this year. You know, I think uh, he's got some nice talent there, man. I mean, he's got Kirk Hopkins, Fitzgerald, just, and, you know, he's got another year of experience or a year of experience yeah, sure. underneath him. I think everything just kind of comes together this year. All right. So uh, next guy here for my number four, Mr. Consistent, Mr. Solid, finished third amongst quarterbacks last year. The guy I'm talking about is Russell Wilson. Now, if you look at him every single year, he always finishes near the top. That's what I like about him. Now, he had a bit of an off year in 2018. He finished ninth amongst quarterbacks. And that's the thing. The Kinshusa see him uh, finish ninth and that, oh, we're going to get off him. So they got off him a little bit last year, and then he finished on top again. In 2017, he was number one. He was the number one quarterback in fantasy points, 347 points. He's always, always, unless he gets injured, which, is, which isn't too often, knock on wood. And I think he got injured back, I think, in 20. I don't know what year he got a little banged up. 2016, he played a full season, still finished top 10. I think there was a year he was banged up for a little bit, missed like one game. He hasn't even been injured that much, knock on wood. (laughs) He's always in the top 10. I'm going back to 2015, and he's always finished in the top 10. So I got him at four. I feel secure with him. And again, another guy you can get for better value than you pay for a Kyler, right? Because people are paying for Kyler based on that ceiling, on the Hopkins, this and that. There was talk that they're flirting with Antonio Brown. If Antonio Brown ends up on the team, that's only going to help him near the stretch, near the playoffs. Uh, man, and I just saw a picture of him. People saying he looks jacked. He's like lifting weights. He's kind of, you know, he looks yeah. pretty big. I don't know. I like him too. I've actually got him at three. Yeah. So my number four is Dak Prescott, who once again, we've already talked about, you know, just Everything's there. Everything's yeah. there for an improved year. So that's my four. Dak Prescott. No need okay. to talk about him more. Fair enough. Uh, number three, Matt Ryan. We, you kind of talked about him briefly. Um, 
you know what? It's one of those things like people are going to sleep on him a little bit more this year. Finished 11th last year. The year before, he was like second, I believe, in 2018. 5,000 yards, 50 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. He had a great year and, you know, only second to, I think, Mahomes that year in 2018. He's got a high octane offense. I'm excited, man. I get this guy in the seventh round, anchor my team with an ace quarterback. They've got a chip on their shoulder. I'm telling you, Falcons, look out for him. I'm he's, wearing the Falcons hat. He's a throwing quarterback that has yeah. amazing talent with him. Like, yeah. The numbers are going to be there, absolutely. And you can debate it all you want. He's got the best receiver uh, duo with Ridley and Julio. I, I don't see anybody yeah. else. You could make arguments with other teams. I just don't see anyone else being better than them. I, I really don't. Maybe if Aaron Rodgers gets Adams and Brown, now you can have a debate. But, I mean, for the whole season... You can't beat these guys. There's no two better two wide receiver duo. You could go Tyreek Hill, Nicole Hardman, but you know, still not not the same. It's just I, I love this. I love the team. Yeah, absolutely. Me too. All right, now number three. My you. number three is we mentioned it. Hustle Russell. Hustle Russell. We talked about him. Moving on to my number two. I got to now. This is the debate. Lamar Jackson, Pat Mahomes, Pat Mahomes, Lamar Jackson. And I got to go number two, Lamar Jackson. It doesn't matter who's at number two or number one for me because personally, for me, I'm staying away. From not paying the price. Yeah, I'm not paying a second or third round pick, and I've done a thousand mock drafts, Tim, and either Pat Mahomes comes off in the second or Lamar, or it's vice versa. Either way, these two guys aren't going to be there come fourth round, and there's no way I'm going to be investing a second or third round pick. Now, I love the ceiling of both these guys. So, I mean, Lamar Jackson could easily finish number one again, but he had such a pinnacle record-breaking season. There's no way. I mean, they brought in Dobbins there to run the ball. 1,206 rushing yards. I mean, that is ridiculous. I mean, he had more rushing yard, Tim. I've, I've said this before, and I've yeah, used this. like top six for running backs Yeah, or top something. six running back. I mean, he had more rushing yards than every other running back except for five. And he's a quarterback. So, I mean, Chris Carson was the— So, Leonard Fournette had 1,152. You know, Josh Jacobs, 1150, right? 1,150. So he beat Jacobs, Mixon, Cook. He had more rushing yards than Dalvin Cook and, you know, Aaron Jones. Like, it was crazy, yeah. man. Just crazy. Uh, it's not going to happen again. There's no way. And if it does, God forbid, he probably is going to get injured if he runs out 176 times. That's just way too risky. I mean, if you're a Lamar Jackson owner, you're you're cringing when he runs out with those fancy moves. I'm scared. I, I'm For that reason alone, I'm going to stay away. Yeah, at some point, the team has to say to him, hey, man, we love it. We love what you do, but damn, we do not want you injured. Please just tone it down a little bit. I feel, I like him because I like him. You know, I like him a lot as an athlete. I just don't want to see him get hurt. So yeah, he's, he's, he's tremendous. Number two. So who do you got? So my... my my one and two are flipped of your one and two. So you got Pat. I've got Pat at two and I got Jackson at one. Okay, so I've got Pat Mahomes at number one. And, and again, I think Pat Mahomes rises. He played 14 games last season, still finished seventh. 4,000 yards, efficient quarterback, 26 and five in regards to touchdown. Yeah. And he, again, he had a bit of an off year with his touchdowns. This is a 50 it's, touchdown kind of guy. Yeah, it's hard to say that though. I mean, he hasn't really built yeah. up enough of a stat to say that. But yes, he went from 50 touchdowns down to 26. There is going to be some kind of a bounce back. He, yeah. He at least deserves to be in that mid 30 range, especially with the team that's around him. I got him pegged for 35. I got him pegged yeah. for 35 as a floor, I yeah, think. Sounds you know. good. You know, I think he's going to be great. The offense is going to look good. He's going to be hungry. He's going to be ready to go. Uh, man, I'm, I'm excited either way. I like him a little bit more than Lamar, like I said. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see. Hopefully, he stays healthy. I mean, there's a huge investment. Pass protection, obviously, an issue there. It could be an issue if uh, Clyde Edwards doesn't get it going. He's a rookie. Do they trust him enough to protect Pat Mahomes? That's a big question to me. I'm hoping that he does. I hope he does well and protects him. Yeah, I just think we talk about it every time, man. I mean, they've got an amazing team around him. Everything works together, and he feeds anybody and everybody. So the numbers are going to be there. The bounce back in touchdowns is going to make up for a lot of points that were lost. Yeah, one and two. You can't argue with these guys. That's it. Those are your top 10 quarterbacks. And I implore you guys, you need to wait on a quarterback. That's what you need to do. You need to wait on a quarterback. As you can see, there's a ton of value here, a ton of value. And there's a ton of guys here, again, that we talked about at the beginning of the show that didn't even make the top 10 that could be in the top 10. Guys like Drew Locke, who's a late-round sleeper. Guys like Philip Rivers, Gardner Minshew, right? There's a ton of guys here. I'm looking at Stafford, who typically isn't in the top 10, but you got him there, right? All these guys are good value that could break the top 10 that are just not even being mentioned. You know who's got a great team around him and just needs to get his crap together is Baker. Yeah. Like, and I was on that train last year because he yeah. had such a good team around him. Yeah. 
Get it done this year, man. This Surprise everybody. Just this make it. it happen. Yeah, get rid of all the haters, right? Including myself. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'd, I didn't even put you in my top 10, but you should be there and you could easily get there. Yeah, another safe guy, Goff. Goff, you know, he's always pretty much a top 10 finish. He's always safe, consistent, could easily be there. So, again, with quarterback, you got so much variety there. Uh, but one more rule here. If you have one quarterback league, get two quarterbacks. Get one on your bench. If you're two quarterback league, get three quarterbacks. Always have a backup plan, guys, for your quarterbacks to cover bye weeks, injuries, or whatever it may be, yep. or lack of performance. That's it. All right, guys, that's it for us. Make sure you guys head over also to manscaped.com. Use promo code SHOWERLION. Get a Manscaped trimmer. That's manscaped.com, promo code SHOWERLION. These trimmers are amazing. And head on over to thefantasyfootballcouncil.com. Get the 16-round draft solution and crush your leagues. That's it, Tim. Yes. We're going to be back next week with Tim. We're talking oh. tight ends, but I'm here every day on the YouTube channel. Make sure you guys subscribe. Leave your fantasy questions below. And we are out, Tim. That's it. Yes, sir. Have a good one, everybody. We'll talk soon. Thank you.